All right, welcome back to Way of the Wrench, and on today's very special episode, I'm going to be doing everything required so that I can get my tempered glass in for the playfield and for the back glass, including a custom rear playfield glass holder because of the wider cabinet. So stick around, you're not going to want to miss it. Now, if you've stuck to the standard or wide body dimensions, you should be able to just order all your parts, including tempered glass, and this thing just goes together. However, for those of us doing custom mods and sizes, you're gonna have to make some changes, and I'm gonna show you how I do mine. So one of the first issues I've encountered is I can't get this in anything longer than the standard 23 inches. If I could, I'd order 25 and then I'd be done. However, I can't, so I'm gonna have to make one. Now, when I put it in here, I've got roughly an inch on either side, and I don't like that. It looks a little goofy and unfinished. So I need to make a custom piece, and I'm gonna make it 25 inches long to fill that gap. And I'm gonna make it out of two pieces of carbon steel, 19 gauge sheet metal, and I'm gonna show you how I do that. Now, the other issue that I've encountered is if I had read the MGR Net Bible thoroughly, I would have noticed that he said, this is the dimension, all right, but while you're at it, put a 12 degree angle on this front lip so that when you mount this, this automatically kicks down at the right angle to match for the sides where the glass is on the sides. So I, since I have to make a piece that's longer, I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone, make it longer, and instead of having these flanges at 90 degrees, I'm gonna kick that back down a little bit harsher at 12 degrees so that that matches up, and then they can just get screwed straight onto this piece. Now that we've got these pieces all cut up, it's time to go to a box and pan brake and bend them all up. However, the next problem for me is my box and pan brake is only to 24 inches and these are 25. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to a buddy shop and then I'll show you how I do it there.
All right, got these all bent up, so let's go back to our shop and we'll spot weld these together and drill some holes and put them in the cabinet. Now that we've got this piece done, here comes the tricky part. We have to figure out where we're going to lay out and pre-drill the holes for the screws to mount this piece. And it has to be in the right spot so that it's even from the left to the right. And then that glass will be able to slide right in. So what I recommend you do is you go to your dollar store and you look for poster board. It's like made of foam core kind of material. And you're looking for 3 16 inch thick so that it slides nice into these side playfield holder trim. And we're going to use that. So you just cut it half an inch bigger than the inside of your cabinet, so it's acting like the width of the glass. Slide it up in here, and then slide this on the end before you push it right against the cab. And then if it's got any minor little adjustments, you can use pages of a magazine, or I use post-it note pads, and you can pick how many pages to make the thickness variable, and make it so that the top of this trim is flush with this trim, make sure it's even on the left and the right, and then from underneath, take a pencil and just lay out where those screw holes need to be. Take it all off, pre-drill the screw holes, and then install the piece. Now that we got this piece in, we can slide our fake glass template in here and we can make a mark with a pencil, take it out and measure that and that'll give us the distance of how much glass has to be inside the channel. But there is a gap enough here that I can see and with a ruler that is three quarters of an inch. Okay, on to the next side. Now at this end underneath the lockdown bar, it's obvious that the glass can't go past the J-hooks. So basically just take a ruler and measure to the front edge of your lockdown bar. And I would not make it size to size, right? You're not gonna be able to cut down tempered glass after. So maybe give yourself about a quarter inch space. That way, worst case, you could put a little bit of that beer foam, uh, that insulated double-sided tape here. That way the glass, if it does decide to move and go against here, it doesn't hit something solid. So in my case, I've got an inch and a half, so I'm gonna say that there is an inch and a quarter that needs to be underneath here. Then all you gotta do is measure from the front lip of this piece to the front lip of the lockdown bar, add the previous two measurements, and that'll give you the total length of the playfield glass. So in my case, that turned out to be 41 and a quarter inches, which added all up total, my length needs to be 43 inches and a quarter. And then for the width of the playfield glass, you just have to measure the inside dimension of your cabinet, which in this case is 25 inches. And a good rule of thumb is you add half an inch. Now what that's gonna give you is each side's gonna hang on to a quarter inch of that glass. And then if you were to actually measure how deep those are, that leaves you with 1 16th of an inch on both sides clearance so that the skin can slide in and out. Now as for grabbing the dimensions for the back glass, I've already got a piece of wood that I want to be the same size exactly as the glass. So off camera, I'm gonna 
take it out, measure it up, and then I'll get the dimensions that way. Now, for the thicknesses of these glass, uh, the back glass should be 1 8 of an inch thick. The play field should be 3 16 and for now, I'm not actually going to put any glass over top of this LCD monitor. Now, I may change my mind later. If I do, it's not a big deal. It's literally just taking this panel off, routing a recess so that I can fit a piece of 1 8 inch glass there as well. Still might do it, not sure. Now, once you've got your dimensions for your glass, you're going to call around somewhere local to you and see who makes tempered glass. Now, we want tempered because normal glass, when it breaks, it turns into these scary, deadly long pieces of glass that are going to cut you up. Uh, whereas tempered glass turns into thousands of these little kind of pea-sized pieces, which are still sharp by the way, but they're nowhere near as dangerous. Now, the other thing about getting tempered glass made is they're going to want to burn in a little kind of symbol to let people know that that's tempered glass. We don't want that, so make sure that you ask them to not put those seals into your pieces of glass. Now, uh, the glass should be 10 to 15 bucks a square foot. Up in Canada, it's probably 20, but uh, I will let you know how much mine is when I get it back. And I have no idea how long that's going to take. I'm assuming it's going to be a quick turnaround, so maybe next week, but uh, I'll let you know soon. So I'm off to get glass. All right, another little issue that has popped up is that when I was designing my pivot point and the length of my stay to hold this playfield monitor up, I did not have this part. So now that it's in there, it actually hits right there is where it wants to touch. So it doesn't go all the way back up nicely like before. However, it's not really that big of a deal. There's still very little force needed to hold this up while you're working in here. So all that I really got to do is trim down this stay so that still works. But any of you guys doing this in the future with your cabinets, if you don't want to have that issue, maybe put that on when you're trying to figure out your pivot placement. Now, if this stock part works for you, the installation is going to be exactly how I just showed you uh, using that foam board. Now, the only difference is because these are straight and 90 degree angles here, this has to have that 10 degree angle so that this matches with your side rails. Easiest way is to do this on a table saw before you put the cabinet together. But if you've already put it together, it's not the end of the world. There's lots of different options. You could hold a belt sander at an angle. You could use a hand plane. Even probably just like some really rough 40 grit sandpaper on a sanding block would make pretty quick work of that as well. Uh, maybe in the corners you might need something like a nice sharp wood chisel. Make sure you're cutting away from your body parts. Uh, lots of different options to get that angle there for you. Now, because the stock piece has got this flat black look and I need to paint my steel piece, I think I'm gonna go prep and paint that now. Now, because I was making one of these from scratch and for the first time, and because I had to go to someone else's shop to complete this, I figured why not give myself some options, and since I had stainless material around, why don't I make a stainless one at the same time? So uh, I figured just give myself some options, and that way if I like this better, I'd have it. Now, if you're going to do this in 16 gauge stainless, there are some things that you need to know. The first one is you are not able to cut this with tin snips and a shear anymore. So I had to use a thin cutting disc on a grinder to do that. And then the bends, most box and pan brakes and brakes will not do 16 gauge, let alone 16 gauge stainless. So what you have to do is from the backside, lay out where your bend lines are, and you have to grind a small groove in there using the same kind of thin grinding disc on a grinder. And it's about grinding halfway through the material. And what you're doing is kind of weakening the material so that when you try to ask it to bend politely, it actually will kind of do that. So I uh, did that and then otherwise everything's the same. Spot weld it together and uh, this time you don't have to paint it. You just have to maybe polish it up and then you got a stainless bar if you want. So now it's time to put our playfield glass trim in and when I went to go drop it in the sides here, it was way too loose, at least too loose for me. So I was not sure what happened. So I went and looked on the forums and see what everyone said. It seemed like a bunch of people didn't have this problem and a bunch of people did. So it's not just me. 
Uh, so what I did is I tried to find something around the shop that would just make it a little bit thicker on that spine so that when you pushed it down it would hold it. And so first thing I grabbed was black electrical tape. I put three strips about four inches long, one on the end and one in the middle, and it is absolutely perfect now. It holds its spot in its place. So easy fix. And keep in mind, once the glass is in there plus this stainless trim, it, it's not going to go anywhere. And now for the stainless trim, when I ordered it from Virtual Pin and I ordered the double-sided tape, they were nice enough to install it already for me, so that's nice. At this point, do not take the sticker off until you are completely done your paint and vinyl artwork. Otherwise, you're gonna damage your artwork trying to take this off again later. Now, mine ended up getting a little scrunched on the end from shipping, which kind of sucks, but lucky enough, these ends are exactly the same so I just had to kind of switch the other side around and I'm going to stick the damaged side up here where it goes in between the back box hinge and the cabinet so you won't even see it. Now when you're going to put this down you're going to slide this end here in between the back box hinge and the cabinet put it down on top of the plastic trim and rather than push this right against the back box I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch gap and the reason why is I'm a little concerned that when I get this back box to move away from the cab, if this trim is right there, it might catch it and kind of lift it up or damage it. So I'm gonna leave a 1 8 inch gap and you won't even see that from the end of the cab. Now, once I've got that position all lined up, I'm gonna to go to the front of the cab, make sure it's sitting down on where it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to take a pencil and mark in the little holes for the carriage bolt where it needs to be drilled. Now on the back here, I don't think there's even room for the head of the carriage bolt. So what I may do over here is put a countersink machine uh, screw through instead. All right, so I got my custom tempered glass back the other day from a local company. It took them two weeks to fill, and the pricing was $120 Canadian for the playfield and 60 for the back glass. So plus taxes, just over $200 Canadian. And the guy said that literally pricing is going up 30% next week, and it's already gone up 300% in the last couple of years. So kind of scary. Um, now, I checked over the glass already. It looks great. There's no scratches, no dings. All the edges have been sanded and polished smooth. There's no weather mark for the tempered glass, which is good as well. So first thing up, I think, is we're going to take the back glass, glass and we're going to strip the template of all the little plastic trim, put it on here and put it in the cabinet, and then I'll show you what the next step is. Yeah, that looks great. So now that I have this in, what I need to do is make a mark either with a Sharpie or a dry erase, or I think I might even just use some masking tape or painter's tape to lay out exactly where I want the paint that I'm gonna put on the back side of this to hide all of this wood trim and wherever the edges of the monitors that I don't wanna see. That way I can confirm before I paint what I don't want to be masked. And then when we're done that, we'll take this out flip it over, clean it, mask that side up, and then paint the edges. But doing it this way is gonna let me know exactly where I want to have it painted. Now, a couple of things that I didn't really account for is these little side trims. They actually have kind of like a flare on the side that kind of 
puts a little spring tension to kind of fill the gap so this thing's not vibrating around and shaking. So that's kind of cool. And for whatever reason, the top piece, when I ordered it, it, it doesn't fit my 316s glass. So I don't know if they sent me the wrong stuff or not, but I don't know if you noticed, I just put the gray cheapo trim that I got from Home Depot. You're not gonna see it anyway, so I don't even need to paint it. So I'll just use that on the top, that way there's nothing loose on here. Otherwise, it looks great. So let's mark this up so we can paint. Once you have your masking tape guides up there, I highly suggest you get to the end of your finball table, put your fingers on the flippers like you're playing, and take a look from that perspective to see if you've masked off everything you want. And you may find you have to go back and forth a couple of times and readjust your tape to get it exactly how you want it. Now, keep in mind, if you look from the sides at really excessive angles, you're gonna still see some of the wood trim and the bezel of the TV, but later on, we're gonna paint that black so you won't see it as, as much. Now, once you got this exactly how you want, we're gonna take this out and go find a place to paint this. Now, I just have to mask the rest of the inside here and trim the little bits to make sure the corners are gonna be nice and square. Now, as for what kind of spray paint you should be using for your back glass, I don't think it really matters. Just about any spray can is going to work. However, a recommendation for you is that you look for one that has a primer built into it, or it's literally just a primer. Reason why is it'll stick to the glass a little bit better. Now, I'm using flat black, but once again, I don't know if it matters that much because whatever you spray on this side, when you flip it over, you're gonna have a gloss from the glass itself, and this is just blocking the light from the backside. Now, spray painting tips before you start. Give this can a good shake for a couple of minutes. If you're shaking hard enough, there should be some dents in the bottom of the can. And then arrow points away from you, six to eight inches away, and think lots of little coats, probably 20 minutes in between each coat, as opposed to one thick coat where it runs all over the place. And then this stuff here is supposed to be dry to the touch within an hour, and it says 24 hours is ready to go back into the cabin. All right, while this is drying, let's go try the playfield glass.
Ooh, like butter, goes in and out, no problems now. And I also like the fact that it kind of has enough friction where it stays put. Cool, so let's slide this up to the top. All right, in most cases, you slide the playfield glass and put your lockdown bar for a test fit and you are all done. However, uh, in my case, I had a little bit of a design flaw. Now, if you may or may not remember when I did the lockdown video, the lockdown bar wanted to slide to the front. And so I had to put these little wooden blocks in here to sit against the side of the J-hook to prevent that from happening. Now, what I had to do before, and I didn't really think about this too much, is that I had to lift the monitor up a bit so that I could get the edges of the lockdown bar away from the cabinet and then slide the J-hook past the edge of the wood block to get it to lift up. However, it soon became apparent that I'm not gonna be able to lift the monitor up because it's almost touching the glass right here, so that isn't gonna work. So what I ended up doing is I squished the shape of the J-hook a little bit because it was a bit excessive. And then I had to put a little chamfer on the little wooden block so that I could kind of come in at an angle with the J-hook to clear a little bit more. And then I still had it just barely touching the edge of the monitor and not wanting to go in. So I just took a little bit of the aluminum and plastic uh, off of the frame or the bezel a little bit, and it does not take any of the strength out of it. There's actually quite a big bezel on this frame, uh, monitor. So I had to do that to get this to work, but now that goes in at a slight angle and then J-hooks from underneath. So onto the very last step for everybody, which is the beer foam seal tape. So now the idea behind the beer foam tape is that you put a strip of this kind of insulation tape on the underside of your lockdown bar. That way, if you ever spilled something on the glass, it doesn't just run into the cabinet and cause a bunch of damage. It gives you a couple seconds there to go grab a cloth and soak it up before it goes in. Now, in my mind, it does another purpose, which is probably more what it was intended for, is it provides a little bit of cushion in between the hard stainless steel lockdown bar and the extra hard tempered glass. So if somebody has a bad game and smashes the lockdown bar, you don't have your glass shattered on you. So uh, you can get this beer foam tape from just about any pinball supplier, but I figured this is just insulation tape. So I went to my local hardware store, which in my case was Home Depot, and I'm looking for sponge window seal. Should be somewhere around the construction or the window aisle. And all it is is a single-sided tape that's got some thickness to it, and you can actually get it in different thicknesses in case you got a different gap than I do. And I'll make a measurement on the inside of your lockdown bar, cut this to length, peel the sticker back and put it onto a nice clean lockdown bar and install it. Now I would watch you don't put it right to the front edge because then you're gonna see it. Just put it in a couple of millimeters and then you won't even see it. And if you screw up, a roll of this is five bucks, so not a big deal. Yeah, that looks good. Time to put that plastic and put it back in. So I've placed the camera exactly where my eyes would be so you can get an idea of when you were playing this, what it looks like. So you can see, I can't see any of that wood trim. I can't see any of the metal bezel from the TV. And kind of every single table is gonna be a little different, but you can there you can get a little better idea of where that black masking is on the backside. And I think that looks nice and slick. Pretty awesome, cool.
right, that's a wrap on another video from Whaler Wrench, this time on how to install your tempered glass into your custom virtual pinball cabinet. Hopefully this information was useful to you, and if it was, I would really love to hear from you. Put it down in the comment section below. Uh, next video up for this guy is getting this to a fully functioning thing with real working flipper buttons and a plunger that works and an accelerometer and some of the coin door uh, service buttons, things like that. So I look forward to that one. And if you haven't already, why don't you join us on Instagram? That way you can see all the behind the scenes stuff that's going on inside the shop. Till next time, take it easy.